In this segment, we'll demonstrate many of the main pattern placement techniques and capabilities of the Quilt Motion system. You can also refer to your pattern placement reference guide for further details. Once you've placed a pattern in a block on the main screen in QuiltCAD, selected the Surely Stitch option, and set your preferences, you are now ready to move to the remote display. The first thing you'll be prompted to do is define your quiltable area. This ensures that your carriage never tries to move beyond the edges of your quilt or beyond the reach of your machine's throat. You will only be prompted to do this the first time you place a pattern after launching the program. We also recommend that you reset your quiltable area after you've advanced your quilt three or four times to ensure that an accurate work area is established in the system. Follow the prompts listed on the bottom of the display. These prompts will guide you through this process. First, move your carriage to the top left corner of your overall fabric work area. Push the button labeled Next. Then move your carriage to the bottom right and click the button labeled Finish. This brings you back to the main screen on the display, showing the following options. The Quilt Motion button will display your placement and fill methods, along with the Settings, Main Menu, and Place Pattern buttons. The Stitching option allows you to select Regulated or Non-Regulated mode for freehand quilting, turn on your Record mode, select Stitch Speed, do a tie-off, clear the Record screen, and start or stop stitching and recording. The ruler button allows you to measure your quilt block's width and height, as well as your overall quilt width. You can also use the ruler to measure the entire work area to help determine the length of your pantographs. The set area button allows you to define your overall work area as you just did. The bobbin wind button turns on your machine's bobbin winder. Now you are ready to place your pattern based on your selected placement method and fill method set earlier in your preferences at the computer. First we'll demonstrate the different methods available for placing block patterns, showing the fit fill method first. Having selected the quilt motion button, you now push the place pattern button. You are now prompted to define your block. In this case, you'll move the carriage to the top left corner of your desired block location. Push the upper left button. Now move to the opposite lower right corner of your block and select the button labeled lower right. Next, select the Sew Pattern button. Your display now shows the Prepare to Sew screen with the screen highlighted in red. The red is a warning that the next button push will activate movement from your sewing machine. This screen is displayed every time you get ready to sew your pattern. On this screen, you'll see the option of tracing the ditch and tracing the pattern, as well as sewing the ditch and sewing the pattern. Tracing the ditch moves the machine along the ditch path without stitching. Trace pattern likewise moves the machine along the pattern path, again without stitching. These options allow you to confirm that the ditch or the pattern are correctly placed before you sew. We will demonstrate the Sewing the Ditch feature later. Now we will select the Sew Pattern button. You are given the option to pull your bobbin or continue to sew the pattern. If you desire to bring your bobbin thread to the top, select the Pull Bobbin button. Push the Single Stitch button. This activates a short stitch on the machine. It is critical at this point to confirm that the needle is in an up position and not embedded in the fabric before selecting the next button. Some machines give you the option of stopping in the needle up position. If your machine allows this, choose this option. Now push next. The machine will then move to the side, allowing you to pull the bobbin and top thread together. Click next to bring the machine back to its starting position. If the bobbin thread did not come up, repeat this pull bobbin process. Otherwise, you are ready to press the continue to sew button. This puts the machine into motion, stitching your pattern. Next, we will show the Margin Offset feature. This feature allows you to offset your pattern from the border of the block in 8th inch increments, giving you the opportunity to fit a pattern into your block with a consistent margin all the way around. This margin can be preset in the preferences at your computer, or you can do it from the display. To access this feature from the display, select the Quilt Motion button followed by the Place Pattern button. 
Pressing the up and down arrow buttons will change the margin amount, which is displayed just below your down arrow button. Note that you can also set a ditch margin to offset your ditch stitch from your block border. Having set your block margin, click the back button. Now you are ready to press the sew pattern button and proceed to stitch. In the third block, we'll place a pattern in a rectangular block, again using the fit fill method. This is to help illustrate the scaling effect on a pattern to place it within the block dimension. This pattern will be scaled to fit the narrowest dimension of the block, centering the pattern. You have the same offset and other options available to you as before. The process for placing this pattern onto your quilt will also be the same as before. Now we will show the stretch feature in the fourth block. This feature stretches your pattern to fit in a block that is not exactly square. This will stretch the pattern in both height and in width to the block edges. Again, you have the same offset and other options available to you as before. Next, we'll show how easy it is to tilt your selected pattern to fit inside a tilted block on your quilt. To access the feature, select the Placement Methods button and select the Tilted Block option. You have three fill options, Center, Fit, or Stretch. Move the carriage to your two lower points first before defining your upper point. You can also utilize the Tilt Placement method to align multiple blocks to your desired position. This will now be demonstrated by placing two triangle patterns. Within the Tilted Block menu, we will select the Stretch Fill method. When placing a triangle block pattern, always select the lower left corner first. Now we can fill the adjacent block with the same pattern mirrored to create a unique look. In addition to placing patterns, Quilt Motion allows you to stitch in the ditch around those blocks and patterns. Here's an example to illustrate how easy it is to compensate for blocks that are not perfectly square. Though perhaps exaggerated, it shows how accurate your stitching can be despite inaccuracies in the quilt top. For the most accurate stitch in the ditch, we recommend utilizing the four-point placement method. The stitch in the ditch feature is available in the block placement, tilted block placement, four-point and the multi-point placement processes. This option becomes available in the Prepare to Sew screen. As explained earlier, you can trace the ditch to confirm the accuracy of your path, which you established when you defined your block corners on your fabric. To sew the ditch, select that button. The machine will move to the beginning point of the ditch. You may then pull your bobbin thread or continue to sew. Once the ditch has been completed, you then have the option to continue to sew the pattern inside your block. We will now demonstrate stitching in the ditch in conjunction with the four-point placement method. At the Quilt Motion menu, select the four-point placement method. This example will utilize the Fit Fill method. This scales and centers the pattern according to the narrowest dimension of your block. Your block is defined by selecting all four corners, the first corner, the second corner, the third corner, and the fourth corner. Proceed by selecting Sew the Pattern. You can then stitch in the ditch followed by sewing the pattern. Now we will demonstrate the four-point placement method using the Stretch Fill method. This demonstrates the accuracy in aligning both patterns and ditches. Now we will show the multi-point placement method, which is utilized to define individual points. Using the multi-point placement method and border-only features, you simply travel to each point of your block. For example, clicking at each point of this octagon defines the stitch path. You then simply select the option of Next to Sew. On occasion, you may find it helpful in a multi-point pattern placement to select Close and Sew, which will automatically connect the beginning point with your last selected point, which is an easy way to precisely line up your beginning and end point. This same procedure is followed with this hexagon. With this star shape, we show how you can undo a bad click by hitting the Clear Points button. This clears out your reference points, allowing you to start over if you think you're off the mark.